can one word really affect over a billion people? Imagine a world where we only spoke about ability. Imagine a world where being disabled didn't matter. I have a personal war with the word disabled. I find it limiting, outdated and negative. 15% of the world's population experience some form of disability. 15%, that's one billion people being held back by this one word, disabled. My idea is very simple. Let's remove disabled from the equation. I have cerebral palsy. I was born with it. It was caused by medical negligence. The team of doctors that delivered me had never delivered a baby before. And because of this, I got brain damage. We found out my diagnosis when I was four years old. After a blur of different hospital appointments, I saw every specialist in the country. And then we found out this diagnosis, cerebral palsy. And the words that followed it were a condemnation. And it's followed me ever since. You'll never walk, they said. You'll be lucky if you survive to the age of 10. This picture is the earliest picture we have of my existence. And the first 48 hours of my life, very uncertain. My family came in from across the country to say goodbye. I spent the first week of my life in special care for babies and the second week in high dependency. All my life, I've had limits placed on me because of this word, disabled. Been told I'll never do this, I'll never do that. I stand here today as a proud man, an international athlete, and a visionary with a passion to change the way we look at disability forever. When I was younger, I hated public speaking because it exposed one of the elements of my condition. I shake. There's nothing I can do to change it. There's nothing I can do to control it. And here I am with my arms revealed to show my limitations. But this has never been an issue. What I'd like to show you guys today is how removing the word disabled empowered me and how we can empower a billion people It's not about the 15%, it's about the 85%. Yes, 15% of the world's population experience some form of disability. They've got their conditions, they've got their diagnoses, they've got their limitations that have been placed on them by the other 85%. I don't need to change the way people's conditions think about themselves. I need to change the way everyone else thinks about them the way everyone else interacts with them. My mission is to change the collective consciousness, how we think about people who are different. So for the rest of my talk, I'm going to make a conscious effort to use the word different instead of disabled. I said at the start, I have a war with the word disabled. And everyone always goes, it's quite a powerful thing to say. When did you decide you have a war with one word? In 2015, I was sitting in the athlete's village in Holland, angry and frustrated at different things that had gone on. And I started to break down the word disabled. I never fully knew what it meant. At home, we didn't speak about it. My family didn't care that I had cerebral palsy. I did everything my brothers did. I did everything everybody else did. And it wasn't until I went out into the wider world, this word was placed on me. And all of a sudden, it mattered. 
you're disabled, you're not allowed to take part in sport, you're disabled, it's very unlikely you'll go to university, you're disabled, it's unlikely you'll be anything in life. So what does this word mean? Having a physical or mental condition that limits movements, senses, or activities. There are so many things wrong with this definition, and I honestly don't know where to start. But first of all, let's break down some of this. Disability is not limited to physical and mental. There are millions of people worldwide that have learning and social disabilities. To name a common few, Asperger's, dyslexia, these are all disabilities not included in this definition. But my main issue with this word, disabled, is the emphasis on the word limits. And this is why I have a war with the word disabled, because when you break it down, it breaks into two words, dis and abled. Let that sink in for a minute. Dis abled. We are literally telling people they can't do something before we even give them a chance to try. We're telling someone based on a medical condition that they shouldn't bother. I was told I'd never walk. I'm standing here today. So clearly someone made a mistake somewhere. And I think we're making a massive mistake by labeling people with this word, disabled, and predetermining their future. I believe by removing the word disabled, we can empower a billion people. And I'm going to tell you how. The first step is to rethink how we talk about this, because it's not talking about. So the first step is education. In schools, we have to talk about difference, not disability, difference. Because young people understand difference. They don't understand disability. When I explain what's going on in my body, why my legs don't work properly, why my left arm shakes, why I can't do certain things, I don't talk about disability because it's the wrong way to talk about it, because they can't relate to it. I talk about difference because everybody can relate to being different. People have different skin color, different hair color. They're from different backgrounds, different ages, different genders, different sexualities. So difference is the way forward to explain it. And the emphasis has to be on education in schools. We have to break down previous barriers toward this word disabled, because that's what it is. It's a barrier. It's labeled. And we tell people you can't do something because of something we don't understand. Difference. Everyone can understand difference. And by educating the next generation, we remove intolerance and hatred. But we need to go a step further. We can't just teach in schools. We have to teach the teachers first. Because the majority of teachers and educators don't fully understand disability. And when I say teachers and educators, I don't mean just in school. Teachers, coaches, anybody that works with humans, majority of people don't understand what this means. And if we talk about difference, then we can empower people. My big goal in life is to put the emphasis on abled. I started enabled, not disabled, as an angry young man, and it's blossomed into work that's taken me across three continents, speaking to 40,000 people worldwide. And what it's taught me in this time is when something isn't talked about, that's when there's intolerance about it. So I think we need to have more open and honest conversations about difference. But we also have to change certain things. We have to change the representation of people that are different. We need global role models. We need people in the media, in the public eye, that are representative of the world we live in. People with different conditions, whether they be physical, mental, social, or learning, do not come from one background. Yet in the public eye and in the media, we only ever see one type exposed. When people hear the word disability, they think of wheelchair users or amputees because it's something they can see. 
Only 8% of the dis disabled population in the UK are wheelchair users. So what about the other 92%? Well, if you look at disability campaigns, that's all you ever see. Wheelchair users or amputees. And they're always from the same background. So as part of changing our understanding and changing our perceptions, I propose that we need to change how we highlight this. There are people with all kinds of different abilities in this room that you're not even aware of. But more on the solution, what can you do in your daily lives? Well, I have three very simple steps and I guarantee you, if you follow these three steps, not only will your communication be a hundred times better, but you will learn things that you didn't even know. The first step when you meet someone who's different is to ask their name. Ask their name, because all throughout my life, people have spoken to me about my condition, not about who I am. Ask how they are. And thirdly, ask them what they can do. Ask them what they want to do. Put the emphasis on what they're able to do. Put the emphasis on what they want to do. I believe strongly, as a society, we should be empowering people. And this is not about coming down to anyone's level. This is about creating a level playing field so that we can empower a billion people. And a lot of people say, why does this matter? I haven't got a disability. There's nothing wrong with me. I'll tell you why this matters. Everyone knows someone who's got a condition, even if you haven't got one yourself. And as I said, 15% of the world's population experience some form of difference. So if these 15% are being left out, we miss out on a whole wealth of knowledge. We're going to do the first social experiment on the TEDx. Can everybody on the ends of the rows stand up, please? Thank you. Yep, that's perfect. I will let you guys sit down in a minute and I'll explain to you why as I continue to talk about the solution. The solution is breaking down previous thoughts. Previously, when we spoke about disability, it was in a negative context. It was about what someone can't do. I'm proposing we talk about what people can do. And I'm going to go back to education because currently education is not accessible and that is one of the key problems with this world. If you have a group of people that can't access education, they can't self better. They can't become citizens of the world and you miss out on what they have to contribute. If a group of people can't access education, then we've done something wrong as a society. And if it's simply just an issue of removing the physical barriers or putting in some aids to help them, such as ramps, then there's no excuse not to. Okay, you guys can sit down now. So, I made you guys stand up, and I didn't tell you why. Well, this is what it's been like all my life. I've been told to do things, or told I'm not allowed to do things, with no other reason given. I was excluded from sport in school for five years, and the only thing I was ever told was it's because you're disabled. So this is a social experiment to teach you guys what it's like living with this word over me, disabled. I'd like to finish with one final point, and it's a quote. He's just a man that moves differently. Harry King. This is a man that has coached Olympic athletes for the best part of 30 years. And he coached me to become the first person ever to qualify for a Paralympic Games in my event. And he didn't know anything about CP, and he still doesn't really know that much about CP now. But to him, it didn't matter. He never treated me any differently. He never saw me any differently. And it's because of that that we've achieved phenomenal things. 
I'm just a man that moves differently. And now this man is asking you to join me on this journey. Join me together and let's enable a billion people. Thank you very much.